Bias and variance are one of the trickiest concepts to get a solid understanding of. When I was studying machine learning, I read about them in a bunch of places, a different couple of different people explained them to me, but I never really understood what they were. Even when I thought I understood, I always went back to the question, which one was which again? I didn't really remember their implications and what they meant. So I don't want you to go through that. So in this video, I will give you a clear explanation of what each of those are and what they mean. So let's get into it. Let's talk about bias first. So bias is the amount of prejudices that your model has against your data. So it basically means that your model is making assumptions about the data that might not be true. This could happen, for example, in linear regression models. In linear regression, our model assumes that the data has a linear pattern. So when the model does not have a linear pattern, it has a problem fitting the data. And that's when underfitting happens, and that's what we call underfitting. So as you can imagine then, high bias means underfitting. Variance, on the other hand, is the variability or the sensibility of the sensitivity of the model to your data. So what happens with high variance models is that they tend to be very flexible uh, machine learning algorithms. So for example, let's take decision trees. Decision trees are very flexible, and when you leave them to it, they will fit the data completely. They will look at all the examples and find cases and divisions in their tree to fit all of the samples that they have to uh, achieve maximum accuracy. But what happens when you do that is your model fits all of the data points, including the noise that is in the data. So that's why you end up having a uh, overfitted model. A way to think about it is that when a model has the flexibility to fit all the data points, it tends to overestimate how important or how well the data at hand represents the real world. So it does not generalize well, but it fits very well to the data at hand. So as you can understand from this definition, when we have high variance, which is a flexible model, for example, then we tend to overfit. So one thing I think is very helpful to understand bias and variance and how they relate to each other is to look at this example. So let's say the actual, the correct predictions that you're trying to make are always going to be inside the innermost circle here. What happens when you have high bias is that you will be making predictions further away from the center in one certain um, corner of the circle uh, world or of, the, of this possible uh, outcomes world. Whereas if you have high variance, maybe you're making predictions at the center, but your predictions are going to be very varied and it's not going to be correctly placed in the correct place. Okay, so we have high bias or we have high variance. How do we deal with these things? So this was a problem that was mentioned as bias and variance trade-off for the longest time, but that was kind of a pre-deep learning era. With deep learning, we don't actually have to call them trade-offs because we have some techniques that can deal with both of them at the same time or deal with one of them without increasing the other. So here is a little table showing us how we can approach solving one problem or the other. If you have high, high bias, one of the things that you can do is to make a more complex system because what did we say? If you have high bias, it means that your model is not able to fit the data. So you're underfitting. And what happens when you're underfitting? It means that you are not able to quite understand the patterns that are in your data. So using a more complex model will help you solve this underfitting problem. Something else you can do is to train your model more. Maybe you haven't trained it enough. Maybe you use and use enough. Uh, you didn't use enough apocs. Or similarly, if this is the limits of the model that you're using, you can use a more um, different architecture, more complex architecture, to see if you will be able to frame your problem that way. Whereas if we look at the high variance case, then what happens is we are we have uh, overfitting, right? What happens when we're overfitting, of course, is that our model things, uh, our model has a hard time generalizing to the real world. So we are fitting so much to the data set that we have in our hands, we are not able to understand what happens in the real world. One thing you can do again is to use a different architecture. Maybe the architecture that you're using is too complex for the data that you have and you need something simpler, for example. Or what you can do is to introduce more data. If you have that possibility, which is not always the case, but if you can, 
including more data into the model will help it generalize better and see more general patterns in the data without overfitting. And the last thing that you can do is regularization. It is basically a technique to limit the complexity of your model so that it will fit in a more generalized way to your, mo to your data instead of fitting into the noise that is present in the data. I will also talk about what regularization is and what techniques there are about regularization in a future video, very likely next week. And apart from that, of course, in my upcoming course, I will talk about bias and variance, overfitting, underfitting, and also uh, regularization techniques, how to solve overfitting and underfitting. Uh, in more detail, we will also implement the solutions by hand using Python and Keras. So if you're interested in learning those, go check out the course. I will leave a link in the description of this video. So just to recap, bias is the amount of assumptions that your model makes about your data. And because of these assumptions, it might completely miss the pattern that is in the data and not be able to fit it. So then we have all underfitting. Whereas if you have a high variance model, that means that your uh, variance or your model is so flexible that it is fitting every single data point in your data set. So at the end, it uh, exaggerates the importance or the representation value of the data set that it already has and is not able to generalize to the real world. Thus, then you have overfitting. Bias and variance are normally trade-offs. If you lower one of them, the other one tends to increase. But specifically with deep learning algorithms, we can do some certain solutions like we saw in that table uh, to only lower one and not affect the other one so much. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you will not need many other explanations for the rest of your data science life. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you have a nice day.